The Placid Pug by Alfred Douglas Read for LibriVox.org by Algie Pug The placid pug that paces in the park, Harnessed in silk and led by leathern lead, Lives his dull life and wrecks not of the shark In distant waters. Lapped in sloth and greed, He fails in strenuous life to make a mark the placid pug that paces in the park. Round the slow circle of his nights and days his life revolves in calm monotony, not unsusceptible to casual praise and mildly moved by the approach of tea. No forked and jagged lightning leaps and plays round the slow circle of his nights and days. He scarcely turns his round protuberant eyes to mark the mood of animals or men. His joy is limited to mild surmise when a new biscuit swims into his ken, and when athwart his gaze a rabbit flies, he scarcely turns his round protuberant eyes. And all the while the shark in southern seas pursues the paths of his pulsating quest, though the thermometer at fierce degrees might well admonish him to take a rest. The pug at home snores in ignoble ease, and all the while the shark in southern seas. If pugs, like sharks, were brought up in the sea and forced to swim long miles to find their food, tutored to front the hake's hostility and beard the lobster in his dangerous mood, would not their lives more sane, more useful be if pugs, like sharks, were brought up in the sea? The placid pug still paces in the park, untouched by thoughts of all that might have been, undreaming that he might have steered his bark through many a stirring sight and stormy scene. But being born a pug and not a shark, the placid pug still paces in the park. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ballad for Bishops by Alfred Douglas Read for LibriVox.org by Algie Pug Bishops and others who inhabit the mansions of the blessed on earth, grieved by decline of infant birth, have drawn attention to the rabbit. Not by design these good men work to raise that beast to heights contested, but by comparison suggested with those who procreation shirk. For if a nation's moral status be measured by prolific habit between man and the meanest rabbit, there is an evident hiatus. Each year, by lowest computations, six times the rabbit rears her young, and frequent marriage is among the very closest blood relations in very tender years ensure a constant stream of little strangers, who, quickly grown to gallant rangers, see that their families endure. Not theirs to shirk paternal cares, moved by considerations sordid, a child can always be afforded, the same applies to Belgian hares. These noble brutes, pure duty's pendants, may live to see their blood vermilion coursing through something like a billion wholly legitimate descendants. Knowledge's path is hard and stony, and some may read, who unaware are, that Rabbit Brown and Belgian Hare are both members of the genus Coney. The common hare, who lives in fields and never goes into a hole, in this inferior to the mole, in all things to the Belgian yields. He will, immoral brute, decline to multiply domestic pledges. The family he rears in hedges is often limited to nine. Such shocking want of savoir faire, surely a symptom of insanity, might go to bishop to profanity, were it not for the Belgian hare. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Song for Vintners by Alfred Douglas. Read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. Song for Vintners. The lion laps the limpid lake, the pard refuses wine, the sinuous lizard and the snake, the petulant porcupine, agree in this their thirst to quench, only with nature's natural drench. 
in vain with beer you tempt the deer or lure the marmoset the early morning chanticleer the painted paroquet alike on claret and champagne gaze with unfaltering disdain no ale or spirit tempts the ferret no juice of grape the toad in vain towards the harp and merit the patient ox you goad not his in rapture to extol the praises of the flowing bowl the silent spider laughs at cider the horse despises port the crocodile whose mouth is wider than any other sort prefers the waters of the nile to any of a stronger style the rabbit knows no private bar the pelican will wander through arid plains of kandahar nor ever pause to ponder whether in that infernal clime the clocks converge to closing time true bona fide traveller urging no sophist plea how terrible must seem to her man's inebriety she who in thirsty moments places her simple trust in green oasis with what calm scorn the unicorn in his remote retreat must contemplate the fervour born of old chateau lafitte conceive the feelings of the sphinx confronted with columbian drinks and oh if all this solemn truth were dinned into its mind from earliest years might not our youth regenerate mankind aspire to climb the heights and dare to emulate the belgian hare end of poem this recording is in the public domain Hymn for Humble People by Alfred Douglas Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson The staunch and strenuous serpent spends his time in the safe field of serpentine pursuits, rightly considering it a social crime to parody the ways of other brutes. Scorning the fraud of alien aspirations, the snobbishness that apes another class, proud and yet conscious of his limitations, he bites the dust and grovels in the grass the moral food that keeps him down is force force to confine their fancies to their beds makes him the laughing-stock of quadrupeds no weak attempt to carol the lark foredoomed to failure and to ridicule troubles his life he does not wish to bark has no desire to amble like a mule having no legs he does not try to walk but keeps contentedly his native crawl having no voice he does not strive to talk much less to bellow or to caterwaul mark the inevitability reached result to balance the advantages he missed in three departments he must yet exult to be the only perfect specialist three arts are this to writhe to hiss to creep the toad's tenacity the wombat's wiles or the keen cunning of the crafty sheep and all are artists in their various styles would vainly challenge them he reigns supreme in these the fields of his activity and reigning so defies the envious bream who sneers and shrugs and sniggers in the sea type of the wise who roar but never foam if they can help it at the mouth except when night and morn they brush their teeth at home with pallid powder for that purpose kept end of poem this recording is in the public domain versicles for vegetarians by alfred douglas read for librivox dot org by betty b versicles for vegetarians since dr watts in frenzy fine extolled the busy bee the patience of the porcupine the newt's fidelity the calm contentment of the pike have stirred our hearts and brain alike lives there a man so lost so low that he has never found some lesson in the buffalo some precept in the hound few who have won victorious cross owe nothing to the albatross these pleasant thoughts must turn our minds in meditation quiet towards the moral law that binds the principles of diet since tis a maxim none disputes that we should imitate the brutes as has been shown in former verse the animal creation does not in its own nature nurse inebriate inclination 
nor is it formed by heaven to pant for alcoholic stimulant that being so our path is plain we must eschew all drinks if we are anxious to attain to the celestial brinks the meanest hippopotamus will make our duty clear to us but in the search for natural guides to moral food restrictions we are assaulted on all sides by patent contradictions thus while the lion lives on meat the pheasant is content with wheat who then when beasts do not agree shall venture to decide some will adopt the chimpanzee and some the fox as guide others the bear or antelope nature allows the fullest scope end of poem this recording is in the public domain hymn for howlers by alfred douglas read for librivox dot org by Tavarish. who that has sailed upon the ocean's face or walked beside the sea along the sand has not felt envy for the piscean race comparing its domain where noise is banned to the infernal racket that takes place on land while up above the billows rage and roar and make a most unnecessary noise and shallow shrimps who live too near the shore are harassed by the shouts of girls and boys who find the beach a place convenient for their toys the happy members of the fishy clan pursue in peace their various pursuits all undisturbed by bell of muffin men or bellow of purveyor of fresh fruits who at each pub his voice republican recruits the harmless herring gambles with his young and heeds but hears not their impulsive play his heart is with their mother who was flung kippered to feed a clerk's bank holiday into the salting tub and passed unsung away now had this herring been of human breed and lived in london or some other town fate would have made him hear as well as heed his offspring as it gambled up and down making a noise that's very hard indeed to drown moreover organ grinders would have ground and yells from both employed and unemployed hoarse howls from those who had salvation found and balls from those whose faith has been destroyed would have combined to keep his sense of sound annoyed who would not therefore rather be a whale a hake a haddock or a mackerel than linger in this sad and certain vale here where men sit and hear each other yell better to go if other places fail to blank end of poem this recording is in the public domain dirge for defeated candidates by alfred douglas read for librivox dot org by Tavarish. the dreadful dragon and the unicorn accustomed to be treated with respect and much annoyed by present-day neglect have sometimes wished they never had been born at least in any world so unselect their non-existence being now a fact accepted by mankind's majority they naturally feel quite up a tree and don't know what to do to counteract these damned delusions of democracy although they often walk out in the sun and show themselves in all important streets although in fact they have their regular beats they are hardly ever seen by any one and get no notice in the daily sheets although as signs they hang on various inns they find themselves irrevocably out in vain they prance and caracol about even the tribute of derisive grins is now denied them in their final rout mere non-belief in his existence may seem to one emptying a festive flagon in the interior of the wasp and wagon a very trifling matter anyway but it is most annoying to the dragon 
the subject may appear beneath contempt to one who holds the world's applause and scorn preferring in a cloister to adorn illumined scrolls in heavenly colors dreamt but it is galling to the unicorn end of poem this recording is in the public domain poem for the proud by alfred douglas read for librivox .org by tabarish seen in the mirror of the poet's dream exclusively reserved for the elect each animal supplies us with a theme for wondering admiration and respect thus to those men who truly modest seem compare the hair the bee performs all sorts of useful things when she is gathering honey for the hive she fertilizes flowers and plants and brings food to keep necessary drones alive unless annoyed she very seldom stings dear me the bee the dove extols and cherishes his mate and coos and woos all through the summer day his life is blamelessly immaculate and though his wings enable him to stray he seldom does he never comes home late by jove the dove the crow displays a splendid scorn of pelf backed by invulnerable self-restraint all specious arts he lays upon the shelf and being free from every primal taint he keeps himself entirely to himself bravo the crow the stork compels our admiration he will stand for several hours in the same place and on one leg instead of two or three thus practicing economy of space a grand example of stability or lock the stalk the self-repressive cod on his own beat swims in elaborately studied curves he keeps below not wishing to compete with surface swimming fishes though his nerves are sometimes tried by lack of air and heat good god the cod end of poem this recording is in the public domain song for silas by alfred douglas read for librivox .org by tavarish the crab walks sideways not because his build precludes the possibility of walking straight and not as some have thought that he is filled with strange and lawless theories on gait still less that he is foolishly self-willed and prone to show off or exaggerate no serious student of his life and ways will venture to impugn his common sense his tact and moderation win high praise even from those whose faculties are dense and blind to the false issues which they raise when they accuse him of malevolence but ah these shallow hidebound pedants cry if to the crab all virtues you concede if his intentions are not evil why this sidelong walk these flanking steps that lead to no advancement of humanity no exaltation of the mortal breed why not go forward as the swordfish goes or move straight backward like the jibbing horse why this absurd and pitiable pose that takes delight in any devious course why this dislike to following the nose which all the best authorities endorse insensate fools swims not the cord in curves does not the running roebuck leap and bound if in his flight the capercailzy swerves shall he be mocked by every basset hound who having neither feathers wings nor nerves has not the pluck to rise up from the ground peace peace the crab adopts a sidelong walk for reasons still impossible to see 
and if his pride permitted him to talk to any one who did not do as he his instinct would be probably to balk the hopes of vulgar curiosity and while the schoolmen argue and discuss and fill the air with what's and when's and why's and demonstrate as thus and thus and thus the crab will pulverize the theorize and put an end to all this foolish fuss by walking sideways into paradise end of poem this recording is in the public domain Fragment for Philosophers by Alfred Douglas, read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish. In the abysses of the ocean deeps, fathoms removed from men and mortal strife, the unexpectant oyster smiles and sleeps through the calm cycle of his peaceful life. What though above his head the steamboat plies? and close at hand he hears the fume and fuss of the impetuous halibut that flies the mad embraces of the octopus though the fierce tales of whales like flails descend upon the water lashed to furious foam and the sea serpents writhe and twist and bend all round the purlieus of his ocean home he still preserves his philosophic calm his high detachment from material things and lays to his untroubled soul the balm of that contentment oft denied to kings not far off on the shore men fume and fret and prowl and howl and postulate and preach the baby bellows in the bassinet and the Salvation Army on the beach. The unsuccessful artist of the halls has blacked his face with cork, and now he sings of moons and coons and comic funerals and the enchantment that the cakewalk brings. And on the pier the military band poisons the air with beastly brazen sound while cockney couples wander hand in hand and dismal tourists tour and bounders bound and donkey boys allure to donkey rides the sitters on the sand beside the sea and toots sell guides to all the town provides from theatres to painless dentistry to all this noise the oyster lends no ear partly because he has no ear to lend partly because he hates to interfere chiefly because these rhymes must have an end end of poem this recording is in the public domain end of the placid pug and other rhymes by alfred douglas